Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Today we're going over Snow, Character Review Part 1, brand new unit released this week as part of the Final Fantasy 13 collaboration. And I'm very excited. You know, I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. It's getting kind of cold in here. One second. There, there we go. It was getting kind of chilly in here. It must be like a new ice matter or something. I don't know. I don't know what that was, but uh, where were we? Uh, oh, yeah, Snow Character Review Part 1. So, getting into things, it's going to be the three-parter like we normally do. Today, the character overview, base stat analysis, the total stats, the crit hit and avoid rate, accuracy evasion. And then I am going to do a little bit about his effective HP and how that stacks up with other tanks. And then the general report card, Parts 2 and 3, as they typically go. Those will be posted relatively soon upon his release. But for now, keeping going with things, brand new ice unit. They gave him the indomitable hero main job that's unique to him with the pugilist and ninja sub jobs. He does equip fists and then hat cloths and accessories as the other equips with a move of three and jump of one. In terms of resistance, it starts off pretty strong with the 20% slash resistance as well as 15 to pierce and 10 to missile. So great against all those historically physical attack types. Minus 5% to magic, which is the biggest thing you'll have to hedge against, but it's certainly not unrecoverable and neutral to strike damage, which is fine. He is a unit that will have 50 faith or at least probably will in most instances so the status ailment resistances you don't have to worry too much about but the 50 percent to charm is definitely a good one considering that he needs to shut down wind and sadali has it on his limit break and that's obviously a really good one in addition to the confusion as well now we get into the base stats of things he is a tank unit base hp is top 15 he's right there with amongst some of the other tanks in the game at this 3675 overall in a pretty good starting spot there and he does get other ways to amplify his hp as well when we get into the next stat, the attack stat, surprisingly, he actually ranks rather high, which is atypical of tanks, but it's an important part of his impact on the battlefield. He does have a top 20 innately high base attack stat, which will scale really well with other attack boosting items, as we'll see eventually. When we get into the next few stats, the agility, definitely a little more average here again these lists are out of 120 total urs to grade from he does skew just a little bit below the average in that regard to 56 base agility when you look at the dexterity kind of the same middle of the pack here maybe a little bit higher 48 out of 120 coming in at 204 base dexterity it doesn't really affect too much of his kit overall and then luck he actually does skew on the higher side here being a top 15 luck unit which does help his critical avoid rate which is part of his survivability as well obviously he also does things for accuracy and whatnot but we'll talk about that more in just a couple seconds here now, when we talk about the reconciliation from the base stats to the total stats, base stat wise, this is where he compares a relative to the other UR units. Overall strengths are definitely that attack stat, definitely skewing higher in the HP and the luck as well. When we include the other things like the board nodes and the mastery, uh, he does get significantly bulkier on the HP side of things, does start to lose some of the ground there in terms of where his total attack stat ends up compared to other DPS, but that's still incredibly great for a tank overall. He does actually get an additional amount of agility off his board, we'll see in a second. Dexterity kind of takes a hit, and luck kind of takes a hit as well. So he's got some great base stats, but they do kind of juggle things around when they uh, include the board. And so a couple of things that are noteworthy here. He does get a ton of extra HP from his board and his mastery. They do kind of jip him on the dexterity side of things, which is why he ends up falling a little bit all in all, and kind of can be set for the luck stat as well. Now as we transition into the crit hit and crit avoid, so these scale directly off of dexterity stats and luck stats, so they do correlate very highly to what we just saw in the total stats where we saw his total dexterity ends up being relatively on the lower side of things, and so does in his critical hit rate because of that. And then similarly with the luck stat being just that little bit above average, his crit avoidance rate is on the little higher side of things as compared to many of the other units as well. I don't think any big surprises here, but at least nice to have some visibility toward. And just if anyone's curious about eyeballing the ranks after, feel free to, but I don't think I really need to go through them. When we talk about the accuracy, so the green line you're seeing here is total accuracy once characters start equipping their passives, and the blue line here is their total innate accuracy, based just off their stats, their master build, and whatnot. And Snow definitely skews a little bit lower in that regard. Total innate accuracy definitely right around the average, actually. It's a little misleading, but as we'll see here, the average uh, total innate accuracy is 160%, and he's at 157, so slightly below it. And then he does technically have a passive that'll give him 20, which is why you're seeing that significant boost there, but I don't think it's a passive you're going to have on uh, very likely at all so although he does keep pace with the group of characters and exceed the average there i don't think that's going to end up being the case in the majority of the instances so you can consider him a relatively inaccurate character but he's got one big ability that makes up for that entirely we'll talk about that in just a second when it comes to evasion and this is with all the luck scaling equips meaning 35 uh, percent vision card 17 percent sub luck vision card trust on passives and whatnot he ends up being just 
salvageable as an evade unit. He's not going to do it regularly, but the potential is kind of there if you're min-maxing for it. I wouldn't rely on it, though, but... If you're comparing to some of the other characters in the list here, he is as evasive as Dark Lilo, who is kind of an evade character in her own right when you're not gearing for the accuracy. So if you're, again, min-maxing Snow to that degree, you can kind of expect some of the similar results, which is pretty cool to see on a tank. Now, we talk about effective HP as a concept. I've talked about this in dozens of reviews at this point. It's one that I think everyone really should at least generally know about and what it means. So effective HP, it's the health pool normalized for other resistances. And that can be not just things like slash and missile resistance, uh, but also defense spear, the elemental resist, AOE and unit resistance. It's basically a way to take the health pool. And as we talk about in economics, turn it from a nominal number into a real number, where basically you add some kind of attribute to it so you can compare it to something else. I'll give you an example of, of what this is. But if you want to know the calculation of how you calculate effective HP, at its most simplest, it would be the health pool divided by one minus the resistance percentage. So if it was 20% slash resistance, it'd be one minus 0.2. Obviously, this is not taking into account the defense and the spear and the other attributes. This is just like a really base math idea of how you do it. Now, just as an example, we're going to look at something like Joom and Whisper, with Whisper being more of a resistance-based tank. And let's assume they're about to take physical slash type damage, meaning we're going to take into account their defense and their slash resistance. Well, if Joom has 5,000 HP and 25% slash resistance, and Whisper has 4,000 HP and 50% slash resistance, if you were just looking only at the HP pools, you'd conclude that Joom is the tankier of the two. That's obviously not the case, though, because you have to also take into account the resistance there. And if you were to plug this into, and assume they have equal defenses and whatnot, plug this into the equation, their effective HP for Joom is this 6,666, and for Whisper, it ends up being 8,000 which means Whisper is going to have to effectively take more of this damage type before she dies than June will. So a uh, really important concept to understand overall. Now there's lots of different ways to look at effective HP because there's lots of different attack types, things they scale off. So you can't really capture all of it, but you can do enough that you get a general idea. So when we look at effective magic HP, which is literally looking at only the character's spirit and their magic resistance, Effective HP, Snow is on the lower side, uh, kind of closer to where Joom is, and she's actually a really comparably good tank to think of survivability-wise when you look at her versus Snow. Now, although she has Protect and Shell, he doesn't. Overall, stat-wise, they're kind of in the same ballpark in many attributes. Now, as we saw, Snow has minus 5%. Magic Resistance has no innate spirit or any way to get it through passives. We'll see that in a second. So he does skew on the lower side. That is correctable, though. Now we look about something like total effective physical HP, meaning we take the four other attack types, scale them off the defense, and weight them all equally. Snow ends up being effectively like the highest other than Engelbert, who's like the impossible mountain to overcome. So he has essentially at this point the highest effective physical HP outside of Engelbert in the game. Another way you can think about this, uh, I, this is how I typically like to define effective uh, HP, uh, weighted EHP. I essentially take slash, scaling off defense, and weight that 33%. I take Magic, scaling off Spirit, weight that 33%, and then I take Pierce and Missile and scale it off of Defense and weight the two of them together at 33% and just omit Strike-type damage altogether. Strike's just not that popular, there's not a lot of modifiers, it's not a significant damage type, so I don't like to have it muddy the waters here. And although there's a lot of Missile attacks that scale off Spirit too, that would get overly complicated. So for now, weighted EHP, he actually ends up being competitive with a lot of the other great tanks here. He's neither the best nor the worst, perfectly well-rounded in that regard. And then you could realistically play with these resistances however you want. There's a couple that I like to set up that are uh, meta-dependent. Just as an example, I like to think of, let's say, dark meta-weighted EHP. So in an instance like this, I don't even look at the pierce and strike type damage. I take the slash damage off of defense, weight that 33%. I take the missile, Scaling off defense, weight that 33%, figuring Joker has missile type attacks, and he and Leela have slash. And then Dark Fina is a magic unit that scales off spirit, so I weight that last half 33%. And you can do that for any meta, water, lightning, yada yada. That's why I say there's really no one way to look at this. You could do it a majority of different ways. Which brings us finally to the report card. So overall, effective HP, I'm giving a B minus, neither the best nor the worst. He does have a nice health pool, he's got some nice resistances. His defense stat is really what makes him shine. And that's where the effective physical HP really comes in. He is an A in that regard definitively one of the best in the game magic wise i am giving him a d and here's the thing it's not that he's super susceptible to magic damage he's so good at physical that you can basically just stack up on the spirit and magic resistant items and the rest of his equipment and be just fine so though it's a d it is recoverable 
And just some things to keep in mind, he does have Courage, which is a big part of his survivability. He's got 20 AoE resistance on one of his buffs. He gets to heal 50% of his health when his HP drops lower than 20%. That's the Dark Leela mechanic. He gets 30 defense quite easily, no spirit though. And his mastery does give plus 5 hate, so he is a tank at Naily, so he's going to draw a lot of focus fire. Now we look at the primary stat, also giving him an A, and again, kind of from the perspective of the tanks here, does have an above average amount of tank damage, where he does have a high amount of base attack. You know, strike type damage is typically unmitigated for enemy teams where they don't stack up on strike resistance, so that naturally gives him more opportunities to do damage off it. He's got an ability that gives him 40 defense penetration and 25 from his vision card sets. That's up to 65 defense penetration, which certainly amplifies his overall damage output. And in some of the JP videos, I've seen his attack stat on average be anywhere in the 13 to 1400 range, which is very high for a tank. So that's definitely noticeable. Now, agility-wise, I am giving him a B. The agility passive, which is one of them that you'll probably use prevalently, does get him to 71 agility. The average is 67 with passive, so he does skew slightly above in that regard. I could have probably gone a B- minus here, given that his base agility is a little bit on the lower side, but overall not in the worst spot. Accuracy-wise, I am giving him a B-, minus, but there's a big caveat here. The accuracy isn't great at all. It's genuinely really bad, as we saw in that chart, but his main ability, like Joom, is a 100% hit chance ability. So... That really does kind of skew the accuracy up a little bit because it effectively just makes the rest of his attacks not as important to use because this is his main ability. So something to keep in mind at least. When we get to evasion, uh, also giving him a C, he is, like we said, potential to evade. It's just not something you want to heavily rely on. Movement-wise, I'm giving him a B. He does have a passive that gives him move and jump plus one. And then finally is a snapshot preview to part two when we talk about all the rest of these attributes. Your passives, I'm giving him an A. I really like his passives. The, all of them do something to kind of effectively change his character and what you can expect across a variety of different maps and metas. Counter abilities, I am going a D. I am really not a fan of his counter abilities whatsoever, which is fine. You got to balance characters somewhere, obviously, right? Overall kit, I am giving him a B. I'm probably going a little low on this. It is a little bit better, but I'm giving him a B because it's just so straightforward. That's not a bad thing, but it's just very straightforward but the final grade all in all when you consider all the attributes how he does the job what he has for upside potential i'm going a minus he's actually a very good character he is one of the pieces that njp ushered in an ice meta now obviously in addition to many other things velas as we know is an s tier character eliza already is doing amazing things in global Eliza is going to come out in a couple weeks here's another amazing missile unit as equally good if not better than eliza so there's a lot of things that are going to make this work, but snow is kind of a fundamental piece to how it functioned. But that's the snow review in a nutshell for right now. I'll be having part two and part three come out in a couple days once we get to uh, build them up and see exactly how the AI works and how the damage values work in comparison to what we see on the global side of things, which does have some significant differences from JP. So while that's a great roadmap, we obviously got to see things work out uh, on our side just to confirm. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all soon.